Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, and he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? All right, I believe he's saying here, are you saved? He's like, well, you're disciples, you're followers, but something was wrong. He could tell something was wrong. So he's like, have you received the Holy Ghost? And what he's doing, he's questioning their salvation to find out if they're really saved. And they said unto them, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. I mean, you don't know about the Godhead. Hold on, red flag, right? Something's wrong. Look what he says, verse 3. And he said unto them, unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism. Right? Well, we came out of the ministry of John. And listen, it could happen. There is the possibility that you might run across somebody one day and they say, well, I got saved and I believed and you know, now I've, all I have to do is put my faith in Jesus and be a good person. And you might say, uh, what have you believed? What are you, what, what's going on? How come what you're saying isn't lining up? And look what he says here. What then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. So he's saying, well then why did you even get baptized if you haven't put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ alone for salvation? Verse 4, then, Paul, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on Him which should come after Him, that is, on Christ Jesus. So he's telling that he's defining repentance. He's defining that baptism of repentance. It's that you should believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Now I want to give you sort of an example of this. Brother Dale, would you help me here for a second? So imagine you knock on somebody's door and you come up. Hey, are you a Christian? Yes. You're a Christian. Okay. Well, do you believe that that putting your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ alone is necessary for salvation. No, you have to do the works too. You have to do the works. Now imagine if this happened. You're like, well, where, how did you become a Christian? Well, those guys at Steadfast told me. I, I, I listened to them and I prayed with them and I went and got baptized. This is possible for somebody to go along, to get along, and they're doing it in a crowd and they're not really getting the whole message. They're not really understanding everything. They were, these were disciples he's speaking to here. And imagine if this happened. You say, well, hold on. Hold on a second, buddy. Here, let me show you the Scriptures. Let me prove to you that it's by faith alone in Jesus Christ. Let me compel you from the Scriptures. Right? This is our job as a soul winner. So we would begin to prove Jesus Christ to all the Scriptures. And then imagine you come to the end and you say, well, now let me ask you this. Do you want to put your faith in Jesus Christ alone? Yes, I do. All right, bow your head and repeat after me. You know, tell Jesus you want to be saved. Now imagine right then, He would receive the Holy Ghost forever. He would be sealed unto the day of redemption. And then once he's saved, the power of the Holy Spirit can fall upon him and he can prophesy mightily. Then he can turn around and say, hey, wait a minute. My wife isn't saved. Hey, hey, come here. You need to hear the Gospel. It's in faith alone. You're not saved. Come here. You've got to hear this. Right? He could turn around and prophesy as well. Thank you, brother. You can sit down.